Oh, Mr. Anderson. Sylvia, could you get Julie for a cleanup? Sure thing. Well, what happened in here? How are you feeling, Mr. Anderson? Let's go get you cleaned up, OK? She's on her way. She was just down the hall. Thanks. Need any help? Could you take the other residents to their room? Sure. Where is it? Julie, do you have a vomit kit? Yep. He's really sick. I'm taking him to medical. I slayed him from the rest of the residents. Good. That'll keep him out of the room while Julie cleans up. Were you here when it happened? No. Two residents were, but Sylvia took them to their room. Okay. We'll need to clean their clothes if there were any spatter. Julie, be sure you clean all surfaces. Yep, will do. If it's a norovirus, we don't want it spreading through the rest of the facility. Norovirus causes vomiting and diarrhea and is the most common cause of food poisoning in the United States. A single episode of vomit can contain millions of norovirus particles, and it only takes between 10 and 100 virus particles to infect a person. It is important to properly clean up vomit because vomit is a concentrated source of harmful microorganisms, including bacteria and viruses. OK, everybody's out of the room. Don't allow anyone back in until everything has been properly cleaned and disinfected and all waste has been removed. It is important to wear protective gear to keep yourself and others from getting sick. Protective gear includes a gown, gloves, shoe covers, hairnet, and face mask. Sometimes it's not practical to wear all of these, so at a minimum, you should wear a gown, gloves, and shoe covers. Once your protective gear is on, there are four steps to cleaning up the vomit. First step is to cover the vomit. You want to do this so you can contain the vomit as well as let people know where it is so they don't accidentally step in it. To cover up the vomit, you can use paper towels or an absorbent powder that you can get from a local chemical supply company. To remove the covered vomit, simply scoop them up with your gloved hands and place them in the sealable plastic bag. The second step in vomit cleanup is disinfection. To properly disinfect the area, you want to use an EPA registered disinfectant effective against norovirus, and you can find this on the label. You also want to use proper contact time, which is also located on the label. Remember, stronger doesn't always mean better. You can use bleach in a 1 to 10 dilution. Then you want to leave the bleach on the surface for 10 to 20 minutes. At present, research has not established how wide of an area to clean around vomit, so clean as wide of an area as possible. This is called the cleaning zone. It includes floors, tables, chair legs, as well as food contact surfaces such as counters. Do what is practical for your facility. If there's any residual disinfectant left after proper contact time, you can wipe it up using paper towels. If you choose to use a mop, make sure you use a pad mop that has a removable pad. You don't want to use a string mop or a sponge mop as these cannot be disinfected after the fact. Step three in vomit cleanup is removal. When removing your protective gear, you want to start by removing your shoe covers. Make sure not to touch any of the surfaces that you have just cleaned, as you can recontaminate these. Then, you want to remove your gown, starting at the shoulders and rolling inwards. When you get to your cuffs, you can remove your gloves, turning them inside out. Place these materials into the waste bag containing all your other vomit cleanup materials. Wash your hands. Then you can remove your hairnet and face mask and place these into the bag as well. To remove waste, you want to make sure that you have all of the cleaning materials as well as your protective gear in the bag. Then seal the bag or use a twist tie. Remove the waste from the facility immediately according to local, state, or federal regulations. Step four in vomit cleanup is washing your hands. To properly wash your hands, first turn on the water to a comfortable temperature. Then wet your hands under the running water. Apply soap and rub together vigorously to create a lather. Continue rubbing your hands together for 10 to 15 seconds, paying close attention to your nail beds in between your fingers and your wrist. Rinse your hands under the running water, making sure all the soap is gone. Immediately dry your hands with paper towels 
then use the paper towel to turn off the faucet and throw the paper towel away. Controlling norovirus in long-term care facilities is important because older adults are a highly susceptible population and can develop severe complication resulting in hospitalization and even death. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 59% of norovirus outbreaks occur in long-term care facilities.